Welcome to the Ubuntu show, everyone. My name is Response and Jage. I'm going to be your host for the day. Today is a very, very, very special day to be hosting this episode, given that today is Jamuhuri Day in Kenya. That means different things to different people. I just thought, you know, this morning that I realized, by the way, what is Jamuhuri Day? How is it different from Madaraka? Then I remembered, oh, yeah. Just remember your basic history, Rispa. On one day, we became a republic, which is today, right? Um, yeah. And then on Madaraka Day is the day we got independent. Lots of things, but thank God, all together. So, Karipuni Sana to this special edition of the Ubuntu Show. Perhaps before I introduce my guests, I'll just like to do a short recap of why we do this show. So, the Ubuntu Show has been born in Lapid Leaders after. Africa as a way to celebrate this philosophy. It was born out of a documentary that we were doing in Lapid and we thought, well, we could have conversations about Ubuntu beyond just one documentary. We can celebrate the work that people are doing here. We can celebrate the work that Lapid is doing. And also hopefully in future, we can celebrate even more people who are doing and celebrating Ubuntu at a larger scale. That is it for the introductions, Karibuni Sana. We want to thank you sincerely. And by we, I mean myself and my co-host who is not going to be able to join us today. Her name is Leslie Mwangi. She sends her regards and also looks forward to the next episode we're going to have together. She will not be available for today, but I got you covered. <laughs> Um, and with that said, I want to go directly to my guest for the day, Mr. Karapa. Haberiako. Oh, I'm Zuri Sana, I'm Zuri Sana. I love the energy that you have. Wow. It really sets the pace for the conversation. Uh, and I'm glad to be here. I've, I've only been seeing uh, this project go on for a while. I was always in the background. And I'm glad that they actually get to go to come to the foreground. Uh, and yeah. I look forward to finally telling my Ubuntu story and even furthermore, the topic that we're having today around Rwanda and unpacking the Africa experience, that was also a highlight for me and the last month. And I think I have a few things that I'd like to come back to my people here in Kenya and say, this is what we learned. And I think this is where we need to go as a country based on what you know we got from that trip. Oh, awesome. I love your energy too. This is what we die for over here. And I hope that this is even permeating to our audience today. We want you to have the most wonderful time. And yeah, even as you think about your Jamuhuri Day, what this means for you as a person, as a family, as a nation, we want you to know that you're not celebrating it alone. We are doing this as a shared experience as Kenyans, as Africans, as individuals, as people who are, I don't know, I feel like this is a day of that reminds us that we've been colonized. <laughs> I don't know what you think, Taraka, but you know, I just, is that the meaning of Jamuhuri Day today? I was like, what? Are you just trying to remind us that once upon a time we were colonized? But maybe I could come to you. What does Ubuntu, not rather not Ubuntu, but what does the Jamuhuri Day like mean for you as a person? But also what does it mean for our kids who may not know what the difference is with all of these public holidays? <laughs> Well, I think first, uh, whenever the day falls on a Sunday or a Monday, then Jamhuri Day means a free holiday. Yeah, I think uh, just for me, that's the open. I'm like, yes, yes, yes. Uh, for sure, I can't, I can't relate to the issues of colonization in terms of I never lived through the times. Uh, yeah. But I think for us as a country, it's always important for us to go back and, and celebrate the milestones that we have had. Because um, also, that is the benchmark upon which we use as a baseline. To, to define yeah. how many years we've been in existence as, as a sovereign nation. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe that, 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 that takes some responsibility, so to say, uh, because then there's always so much you could blame on the colonizers. I mean, even right now with neocolonialism, the, the effects are, are still felt. Uh, but I think Jamuri for me marks the day when we said, now it is us, you know? Uh, I know we had an year of, uh, internal self-rule, but now we do not say, God bless the queen or the king no more. 
uh we just go and say the muse up top then that was muse jomo uh, was our supreme leader at the time mm-hmm. and i think just moving forward beyond that uh for this would be the fifth regime uh mm-hmm. you know fifth president of the country we can always just go to say it is still the onus is still on us to deliver as a country and and, and that, that's what jamhuri means i feel really patriotic when i watch the celebrations on tv but when i don't i'm just enjoying the holiday uh, out here <laughs> malinga <laughs> so to say yeah uh, okay yeah. okay thank you so much for sharing that um so this is i don't know why i thought you said i am i thought of jamhuri day and discovered someone like my sister and my younger brother they may not really get why what are we even doing except that it's a day where they'll have a lot of chapo and a lot of food and they have to <laughs> and probably they will get special things that they don't get on a normal day but thank you for sharing that and pop even before i go to the fact that you went to run down it's jamhuri day so let's be patriotic with one last question what's your uh-huh. favorite thing about being kenyan oh well mm. uh, i've watched enough movies to understand that um uh, we are blessed to live at the equator i think mm-hmm. for me it's an issue of weather uh mm-hmm. and i know in january you might complain the sun is too hot or in july it's too cold but mm-hmm. listening to people who've traveled uh you know to europe or further down south africa mm-hmm. those places are cold they are cold and for us here you know mm-hmm. the, the winter is just like i know i know maybe i might be complaining but people say we have it good mm-hmm. and for me that's a big thing uh as a kenyan uh, and i i celebrate that and, but also speaks to the number of things that we can, I actually celebrate celebrate about being Kenyan mm. I think we get kind of kidogo um mm. because we are we are constantly feeding off the the complaints uh the corruption you know just everything that's negative is is what is propelled in in the mainstream media um mm. but maybe in the future that's something I'm looking to change uh celebrate the heritage to be glad for what we have achieved so far as a as a society you know even as a country as a whole and also be hopeful about the future um, yeah. because i think that's something that we young people are not you know we are not mm. hopeful about the future it's only bleak but mm. i think it's also up to us to change that narrative uh, moving forward mm. well i love that i love that it has actually touched on three things here is me being a deep thinker uh but the first thing it has reminded me i love what you have mentioned that we have a lot to celebrate as a country our weather being one of it but often times it feels like kenya is just we are just about to collapse you know like go to twitter go to go to instagram go to the news that's actually the saddest part for me even the news are always spreading a narrative of it's like everything is falling apart there's there's nothing to celebrate in this nation there's you know there's there's not it's like there's nothing good that comes out of here which is untrue which is actually what i love the second part of what i have heard is i love that what you have said is actually ubuntu because we've been telling our viewers in this show that we need to see ubuntu fast it's not a buzzword that's something i'm careful to mention it's not a buzzword because with social media people tend to think oh i just need to get behind a trending hashtag or a word that sounds like i am woke or like i know what is happening around me but really if we're not doing this for that purpose if it was we could have just posted some weird traps i don't say fast traps <laughs> yeah, so we could have just done that a long time ago and say hashtag #ubuntu and we are done but that's not what we're aiming for it's ubuntu is actually about celebrating what is what are you surrounded by who are you surrounded by what do they mean for you what do you have to be grateful for and if you in this country we have a lot really the third point you were recently in rwanda maybe i should brag a bit and say we <laughs> we were recently in rwanda but yeah you were recently in rwanda as part of the africa experience that is done by lapid leaders africa maybe to someone who doesn't know what is this africa experience thing i'm hearing about uh from lapid leaders africa what is it why is it and 
Uh, so what is the African experience? And secondly, why would you say we chose to go to Rwanda this time round? Mm, thank you. Uh, so maybe I can start by explaining what LAPID does and how the African experience fits, fits into that. So at yeah. LAPID, uh, we train young people on matters leadership and entrepreneurship, and our goal is to equip them with the right skills, with the mindsets and the networks that they need uh, to become change makers for Africa. Our outlook and our aim, our mission as an organization is to develop leaders for Africa, not just uh, Kenya, but we also understand that we have to start uh, with Kenya, then grow outwards. Uh, and we do this through three main ways. We are pillars of our program which is called Lead Self, where we focus on building the individual. Lead Marketplace, where we focus on equipping them with market readiness skills. This will look like interview preparation skills, CV, uh, LinkedIn pro positioning, uh, and uh, a couple of ideas around entrepreneurship. Uh, then the last leg of our, our program reads uh, Lead Africa. And Lead mm -hmm. Africa is where our primary focus is to build uh, builders, so to say. Yeah. You know, uh, and build us along the lines of entrepreneurship, entrepreneurship and civic innovation. Our goal mm -hmm. at the end of this is to have uh, our participants appreciate the process uh, of looking at problems, coming up with solutions and growing those solutions and not just growing them yeah. within the country, but across the region and ultimately within the continent. Uh, and so we now to, to assist with uh, getting a better appreciation of what uh, the continent faces, there is where Africa experience comes in. So Africa experience is just a rapid mm. term for a study trip that the participants who've gone through all the three pillars of the program uh, get to have uh, by visiting a country within uh, Africa, where they get to interact with mm. business leaders, government leaders, young people who are leading uh, innovative uh, solutions over there, just to get a good appreciation of the opportunities, the challenges, mm end of the culture so that even as we say we are growing to be leaders for Africa we have mm -hmm. a good appreciation of what outside Kenya looks like because sometimes it's usually very easy to think that uh, what happens here in Kenya is what actually happens outside it could be that first that is fast that's not true but also mm -hmm. uh, we might get stuck on, you know, maybe Kenya, there's a lot of bad things that are happening. Um, mm -hmm. But once you travel outside, you can see uh, maybe these are some of the challenges that are faced by many African states. Uh, sometimes you may think that we are superior and, yeah, and maybe maybe there's a case for that. Yeah, yeah. You know? <laughs> but <laughs> sometimes it's also good to travel outside and uh, and get checked. You know, you, you come like, for us, we went to Kigali and we saw a few things and we're like, yeah, yeah, I know Kenya, we are, Pretty developed, but yeah, there are a couple of things we can borrow from this society here. Yeah. And I think that's that's the essence of Africa experience and also to grow networks. Uh, mm -hmm. Because this work of building solutions for Africa is not a one person thing, it's not mm -hmm. a one community thing. We have to grow networks in such a way that our solutions uh, can always uh, be integrated within different societies. Mm -hmm. And that is also a big part of Africa experience, you know, coming back home with numbers uh, that you can use personally and professionally. Um, yeah. Mm, brilliant. Um, I just realized I had overloaded you with questions. So thank God you have stuck to explaining what the African ex uh, experience is about. To our viewers, I hope you have taken notes. Lapid is so cool on so many levels. <laughs> We're not even kidding, but it's true. The truth is that I love one of the best classes we've had, we have in Lapid Leaders Africa. I guess you know, it's part of the Lead Africa classes. When we are doing design thinking, we are almost encouraged that you do not design solutions based off of what you think should be the solution. It's conduct research. You can have your hypothesis of what the solution might look like, but conduct research from the users to really know whether the work that you're developing makes sense or not. And I love that Lapid Leaders Africa has been exactly like playing that role of helping people to know the places they want to create solutions. For. It's easy to say, oh, I want to build for Africa, but how much about Africa do you know? Have you gone to the places? Have you visited? Do you even know what the customs processes look, looks like? Do you know what opportunities exist in that country or the challenges that 
you know so so i love that lapid is doing that and to our viewers i am also part of lapid i'm not like talking about <laughs> an organization that is just out there and then me i'm just reporting for them you know this is true and i can attest to the fact that this africa experiences are very important in even molding someone's mind which brings me to maybe my second question to you karafa so this is a show about about ubuntu and yes much as we're going to talk about rwanda so what would you say ubuntu means to you for me ubuntu is concept that um, is actualized in society where we understand that for me to succeed you also need to succeed and mm. I, I think that's the core, my core understanding of what ubuntu is um we live in a time where hyper individualism is uploaded uh, mm. but in all honesty for us to function well as a society we always mm. need to have the best interest of our neighbors at heart and yeah. that also looks like uh, maybe waiting in line for mm. one more minute it means not littering on the streets it means uh yeah. coming up with initiatives uh to support those who do not have the privileges that we have uh mm. and, and not because we just feel superior but because we have an understanding of i am part of something that's bigger than you yeah and in all honesty my time here on earth is very limited uh so then the only way i can assure my legacy and my immortality quote and quote is to develop that which is bigger than me which will certainly outlive me and yeah. for me that's how i see the ubuntu philosophy coming into play and that's how i i try to live my life uh with the interest of my neighbor at heart as hard as that, as that is but and it's a selfish reason maybe this is how i get to live beyond death here or not. so it's fine it's fine honestly if it's a selfish reason that serves other people I don't see why not, you know. Um, but I love what you have said that Ubuntu is basically that we depend on each other to succeed. So no one can say, Oh, I'm the one who has established and built Kenya from scratch. You know, once again, like coming back to the fact that today is Jamuhuri Day, no, no one person like this can come and say, I take credit for where Kenya is. Financially, economically, socially, uh, the way businesses are done. Like it has been different people playing their roles, and that is why we are where we are. So now the task and the challenge today is now what we are building. Can we build this in such a way that it can uplift us in a manner that is positive, in a manner that is sustainable? And which is why, once again, I feel that the study trip to a place like Rwanda really helps with even seeing why we need to build um to build generationally but also to be conscious of what our choices need i hope i'm saying this with the best respect to the people of rwanda and to the republic of rwanda but i know now that i was part of this trip we visited the rwanda genocide memorial and you know one of the things that today it is difficult to understand is how did even how how did people move from they were living harmoniously together to a point where now there's mass like destruction and mass killing of people that have been your neighbors people that you have lived with it's the small things we do it's when we forget that it's not just about me and that every other person has a right to exist as much as we ourselves do but anyway maybe i'll just come back to you so why Rwanda? You could have picked a lot of countries. Why Rwanda? That is true. Uh, we could have picked a lot of countries, but the reason we settled for Rwanda is, um, well, we what we know about Rwanda, particularly for for us here in Kenya, is that it's a it's a small state uh, that is quickly doing things uh, that will put it uh, will put it as a country at the pinnacle of um, what a functional African state should be. Yeah, yeah, you know, uh, government mm. works for the people, uh, mm. people uh, who work in collaboration with the government. And for us, when we're thinking of places we would want to visit, we're like, yes, I know. We cry that Kenya is a dysfunctional state. And I mm. think that's also a very uh, oversimplified way of looking at our, at our situation here, back, here at home. But mm. when looking at it from that point, we wanted to see what does an anti-Kenya 
you know, mm. something that is very different from Kenya look like. Uh, so mm. that when we come back, we might see how we can go about improving our processes. Um, because there's usually so much apathy around uh, whether or not we can change government in, mm. in the sense of can we change the notion that government is there to serve itself, not to serve its citizens. Um, mm. And that is one of the driving uh, motives for us to, to visit Rwanda. This was mm. uh, this will have been our second attempt uh, yeah. for the trip. Um, I think the last one that took place was in 2018. Uh, yeah. But after that, we tried once again in 2020. Uh, but the COVID pandemic hit just a week before uh, yeah. we, we traveled. And so that contained us here in the country for, I think, a solid two, two years. And so yeah, November was a... Was, uh, going up the mountain and like yes finally we have conquered that uh went yeah. by bus so got an opportunity to see uganda this is just to yeah. appreciate to appreciate the differences between uh the three countries and so yeah yeah so one of the good choice for us awesome thank you so much dear viewers are you hearing what i am hearing <laughs> we went to rwanda this is lapid i'm saying we is lapid um which is amazing. So, Karafa, let's say someone is interested in joining Lapid Leaders Africa and they know that you are in Rwanda, but before they wait, do the application process, wait until they can qualify to go for an Africa experience with us. What are the, some of the places we visited in Rwanda that if someone was out there, they are Kenyan and they want to check out maybe a few places or companies they can go get info from? Yeah, what are some of the places that you guys visited? Well, um, I think maybe before we jump into the companies, it's the cultural sites. A uh, big one for me was the Kigali Genocide Memorial uh, that mm. you say, and it was big because it showed me, like you earlier mentioned, what it, what happens when we decide not to look at our neighbor as our neighbor. And mm. so that just give us perspective uh, as to what, we need to be on the lookout for, for as a country, even when we have divisive politics or uh, we're not agreeing with each other. You know, it yeah. always comes back to we are one society and that is something that we should cherish. Uh, the other place was a place called Biriogo. Uh, hey, this, this this was an interesting place. Uh, mm. Some place down in Yamirambo. Uh, it's a street that has been blocked off in such a way that uh, restaurants and eateries have set up on the street and it's it's painted and just a place where there's a lot of uh, culture when you go there people are just doing their own thing and i can't quite explain never been to such a, an experience here in, in nairobi uh, yeah. definitely recommend that uh mm -hmm. onwards to some organizations that we visited a uh, big one for us was um south bridge um which is a pan-african investment company it was, it was a big one for us because it showed us what, in, in, in essence, uh, an investment company that has an outlook that's African can actually achieve uh, here in the continent. You know, At the moment, mm. capital and money is primarily white, uh, but yeah. this is an organization that's trying to bring it all back home, bring investments in Africa and also drive investments uh, by Africans uh, to further the continental agenda. Mm. Uh, another one was uh, B-Box. I know we also have it here in Kenya, so it's also a good place for us for you to visit, to see how operations uh, across different countries work. And you know, mm -hmm. uh, um, some sometimes the things that happen in the Kenyan office are very different from things that happen in Rwanda, uh, or yeah. in a different place. So B-Box was also a good uh, learning opportunity. Uh, another thing, another place that really stuck with me uh, mm -hmm. was the visit that we did to Marge Consulting. Which is mm -hmm. a you know a finance consulting firm that's uh, built by yeah. Kenya and thriving in 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 Rwanda, and yeah. hearing the story of how they've set up, how they are expanding, uh, just give me a uh, perspective into what it actually takes uh, to build uh, an organization uh, that delivers mm -hmm. a solution in such an excellent mm -hmm. manner, which also mm -hmm. just feeds into the um narrative that we have here with the Africa experience in Africa, I mean in Lapid also, you know, we are builders. Uh, mm. Even when we come into existing organizations, we go there to, to you know accelerate the growth. 
Asui yeah. Amaju is also a good place. There mm-hmm. are places that we visited, but for me, those are the ones that really uh, stuck with me. Mm, nice. Thank you so much. Um, and I love what you have said that there are people thriving out there. They are Kenyans and they are thriving in other countries. And, you know, someone might wonder, okay, so you guys are talking about some Africa experience you went for. What does it have to do with Ubuntu? This has everything to do with Ubuntu. Because one, as you said, if Ubuntu is building and building for generations and building sustainably, how do you build for a place if you do not know it? It's important or at least we felt that we would really love to share this experience with you so that even you, should you get to visit other countries, you know, don't just go looking for the tourist site. Maybe look at the businesses that are thriving there. Look at who else is present in that country. See what you can borrow. You are more than a person to just take photos for fun. It's, I don't know. Try to get a bit more inspiration, and I love that. Maybe another institution I can mention now that I was there with you is I love institutions like CMU, the Carnegie Mellon University, and the African Leadership University, all based at the same place. As it's more of a, a special special economic zone. Yeah, that's what it was called. I guess it's the equivalent of EPZ here in Kenya. But now this one is for you know, the biggest companies that want to build there and talent is still within the same area. Those are universities I would totally encourage people who are watching this to check out. You know, you don't have to go get a good education, you know, good education in some university abroad, 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 as we think about it. Rwanda is right here and they're doing amazing things in ALU, in CMU. And maybe another place that also stood out for me was the Rwanda Development Board. Mm. I found it very amazing how the government has a one-stop shop for all business questions. So if you want banking services, same place. If you want taxing things, same place. If you want ICT things, same place. It's, I found that amazing. And I don't know, but at least today it's, I'm not being interviewed. So I shall just say <laughs> that stood out for me. As for what lessons you can pick from it, maybe that's a conversation for another day. Um, so maybe coming back to you, Karafa, you have said that you love Biriongo, this street that had, that was, I don't know, it was painted on the floor. Like it's very, it's very distinguishable from any other space there. Which brings me to a question around community and a sense of belonging with each other. How would you say, how would you compare the sense of community here in Kenya versus what you experience in Rwanda? I would I would say that uh, what what I saw in, in, in Rwanda was a um, sense of community that moves beyond um, li- lines of family, uh, lines of immediate friends, immediate neighbors, uh, mm. where I find here in Kenya, we we yeah. contain what we will refer to as community, and this could be reflected in the way that strangers interacted with us, uh, mm-hmm. on how or on the way the you know the city has been maintained, uh, lack mm-hmm. of vandalism, um, minimum to no complaints about robbers, you know, and 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 that just for me speaks to a sense of people care about the other person. Because also mm-hmm. when in traffic, you could see the famous do this, what we see yeah. here in Kenya, you know, actually uh, respecting the, the traffic rules, uh, have yeah. been uh, making sure that all the people, billions, billions, and people can do the, I guess mm-hmm. who are, are passengers on the motorcycle, they, are, they wear the helmet, speed limit of 60 uh, in a taxi. Um, if you actually carry excess, excess is one extra person you you find and that just speaks to a community that actually says this is these are the rules of engagement that we agreed to this is what we're going mm-hmm. to play by. even if it means mm-hmm. that i do not get as much as i need to get uh, as i could get based on my mm-hmm. individual efforts i'll respect that uh for mm-hmm. the sake of engagement. so i think for us kenya we still have a, a journey in that sense uh, to mm-hmm. move beyond the people that we know, you know, our immediate circle of influence, uh, mm-hmm. to really expanding it outwards uh, as a city here in Nairobi. Uh, mm-hmm. How do we 
as you know as its residents try to uh, use the facilities that we have because mm -hmm. i remember uh, looking at the traffic island that's you know well uh, well landscaped and i could see an automatic drip irrigation system and i just thought what mahali that that is what we can sell you know and yeah. it actually struck me as like yeah as a kenyan this is what i could sell but here they mm. decided you know what this is you know without having to be policed around this is what we are going to use this water for mm. and uh, that was a big one for me nice i love that so maybe my next question almost feels redundant uh, so maybe you can answer it in 30 seconds. So what things do you feel Kenya can borrow from Rwanda just to improve our own experience here? Um, re respecting the the rule of law. Mm. I, I respect there's 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 definitely a lot of opportunity in in our lack of respect for the law. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Because I mean there. <laughs> There are where there is chaos, there's opportunity. Yeah. But you, for, for for everyone's sake, other than mm -hmm. the, the really street savvy ones, if we could all mm -hmm. respect the rule of law, I think we could uh, we could have as a community, we can go a step further. Um, mm -hmm. because a lot of the entrepreneurial spirits that we have, uh, a lot of the street smarts uh, a lot of the courage that we have as a as a people can can only be uh, grown further in a conducive environment otherwise we end up with a man eat man society where you know have to step on you to get ahead and that yeah. doesn't lead to us as a community as a society mm -hmm. I love that. Thank you so much. To our viewers and our audience for today, whether you're doing this live or you're going to be watching afterwards, I hope that as you listen to this thing, you take a moment to actually realize that our guest Karafa is not sharing this just so that we can look like we are very woke or like we think seriously about things. Imagine just the kind of opportunity that is there in this country. If you were to choose to operate within the law, it has the law has never been designed to oppress anyone. And I would say that truly, I think Rwanda to a very large extent, they have understood that. Because now it has helped them to have a very functional city, a very peaceful city. It's a place where people can trust. I can go and I will be safe. So it does have a role to play. So if you have a neighbor who you see maybe they are being selfish here and there. Come on, call them out in kindness, just for the sake of our own country. That's the whole goal of even doing such a show. It's not just content, it's a call to action. What are you hearing? What can you do? But which brings me to, well, Karafa. Fine, Rwanda has many nice things, a lot of things we can we can borrow. But in the spirit of Jamuhuridi, and in the spirit of teaching Kenyans that there are about this country to still appreciate what while you were in rwanda made you remember things at home that you were like hey i appreciate this from back home <laughs> a heavy one for me was the internet mm. i i don't remember the last time i was on 3g or mm. even 2g i remember trying to send out a message on whatsapp and it's buffering it's loading and i just wonder man I, sh I, sh I, I thought, I thought, I thought everyone right now was on 4G. <laughs> and, and you know, it, it brought me, <laughs> it brought to my mind the conversations around, uh, I think I had somewhere where Paul in Rwanda, I think this was Nyerere, was telling the, his people that, mm -hmm. yeah, you guys, you, you, you want to see development. Don't wait to go to Europe, go to Nairobi. And there you will see, you will mm. see what people go to see in Europe. Hey, and mm. for me, the internet was just that for me while I was in Rwanda. Mm. Uh, there was also, like I said, maybe maybe this is just the Kenyan in me. I'm used yeah. to the chaos. No, the, the chaos, there's opportunity. Uh, I mean, in, in Tao, when I'm walking around, I am trying to jump over someone who's selling nyanyas, over someone who's trying to sell me something. Mm. And I never actually take time to walk in stores and you know just shop because if I wanted something on the go, I could always pick that up on the street. Yeah. In Kigali, that's so different. You know, there are no street vendors of that sort. And yeah, I mean, it's good. It's calming to walk in a, in a city that's clean, that everyone is just, you know, 
doing their own thing in a very nice way. But then what are we supposed to be done to, to do with all this energy, you know, that we are used to walking in Nairobi with, walking like a dangerous mm. person, looking like you know where you are headed to. I mean, mm. I, I missed it. It was, it was only a week, but I missed that. Mm. I really missed mm. that. I, I missed looking at uh, two, you know, right, left, right, left, before crossing a one-way road. <laughs> Oh, I love I'm yeah. living over here. <laughs> uh, okay, thank you. Yeah. But it's true, though. Like, we do have a lot to appreciate. Our internet, even the sense of bustle and life in this country is, uh, yeah. trust me. That's when you'll appreciate. Um, I also appreciated the fact that we have fast food services here. Okay? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Hey, 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 hey. Me, I've never been to a place where I'm, I'm waiting for meals for almost an hour and I want, I want, I want to be moving. Yo, even if I just want to talk to someone, I'd rather talk to them while my food gets cold, not that, yeah. oh, I stories, stories in Asia, and our meals are yet to come. So I think I would say I really, really appreciated having it made me appreciate how fast sometimes we do things here. But well, that's enough about, you know, Rwanda and what people can pick from it. But yeah, maybe just as a as a tip uh, for someone who's going to Rwanda, just patience. Patience, hey, Manze, you'll have to be very, very, very patient uh, compared to your normal level of patience here in Nairobi or Kenya in general. But as we wrap up, Karafa, perhaps what I would want to ask you is, well, there are different people who are going to listen to this conversation or even ever just come across it, yeah? So we've been talking about Ubuntu and we've talked about the idea that if you're going to build for Africa, no one is coming to save us. So we I need agree. to know, we need to know other African countries. We need to know their cultures. We need to know how their governments operate. We need to understand the general aura of the country. So, and maybe something else to tie into that. Africa has the largest population of young people in the world right now, <laughs> naturally. <laughs> we are blessed people. Um, but we have, yes, we have such a large number, a population of young people all of them whom we are encouraging to build Africa, build for Africa, Africa for Africans. A lot of those conversations are happening. So maybe my question to you is twofold. If someone from government is listening to this conversation, like, would you have any thoughts of what you can, you would like to suggest around building capacity for young people in Africa? Or yeah, like if you have anything you would like to suggest, what would it be? I think for for our fine citizens uh, within government, a big thing that I would honestly um, ask of them will just be let the processes in government work. Yeah, I mean there there is a lot of opportunity in streamlining systems and uh, streamlining processes if we can deliver services. To, to the citizens on time without uh, a lot of uh, hula baloo, you know, uh, around the place. Because government in itself should serve as an enabler. Mm. It's not a profit making mechanism. It mm. should be there to facilitate people to make profit and to make mm. profit outside of government. Mm. So for someone who's in government, who is in a position to streamline uh, mm. processes, or rather even, someone who's a desk clerk somewhere, if you can deliver on your assignments, on your responsibilities respectfully, uh, mm. efficiently to the best of your ability, then you are mm. part of the solution that we are really looking for. Because mm -hmm. listening to people in Rwanda, when they say a lot of the designs, a lot of the things that our society is trying to implement here are actually designed in Kenya. Mm. And I just wonder, so we, we actually have, ways of doing things yeah that people mm. are actually um looking to borrow from but where we mm. go wrong uh, for us as a country is in the implementation phase because of a mm. lot of competing interests and i think mm. that 
they should be a lot of hope there. We can't do away with competing interests because of you know, a democracy, different uh, political uh, parties, and that speaks also to different interests. But for everyone who's in government, if we can only agree like, okay, okay, this is what we have, this is our cake, you know? Mm. Let's, let's portion it out as much as we can in a fair, in a just manner. Uh, for mm. so that even if there are excesses and maybe losses that will be made, uh, you know, uh, what we will say in terms of corruption, um, mm. revenue lost, assets uh, mishandled, let them be to a minimum so that mm. for every other citizen, we are many. Mm. Uh, we are many people compared to the number of people in government. If you can only enable the young people uh, to have access to services that will enable them to build businesses, uh, mm. to register uh, for, for different government opportunities that come across and to actually be paid their due when when it comes uh, the moment to pay up, then you are the kind of leader that we want. And you can be a leader from whatever level that you you you, found, you work in government and for us mm -hmm. as citizens. And so having this the outlook of, yes, this government is here for me. Let me support mm -hmm. it. Yeah. Oh, so that's brilliant. I love that. A government official. Mm. I love, love, love that. It's true. It's true because like, even if we have a country with a lot of energy, a very good human capital in terms of population, in terms of we have very good talent because like, you know, our education systems, well, <laughs> a bit needs to be worked on. There's still a lot of good things that are coming out of there. People who are ready that can build, but if the country is dysfunctional, if things are dysfunctional, then it's not serving any of us. So I love, I love that. I hope everyone who's had this, that's what we are calling African leaders to do, please. All we need are functional systems. Surely the people have already built this continent so much. Imagine how much farther we could go when it's now a collaborative effort of between the people themselves and the government themselves. Because everyone has a role to play. We can't act or live like, oh, it's only one person who's more important than the other. But altogether, I really love that. Maybe the last call to action I would ask you to make is the people hearing this Lapid thing, they're like, okay, take me to Lapid right now. How does someone join Lapid? Yeah, how do they qualify to go for an Africa experience in Lapid? Where do you start? Well, I'll recommend that you first head to our website, lapidleaders.africa. Uh, there you get to learn more about the kind of work that we do. You get an introduction to our community. And also there you get an application link uh, so that you can sign up for the upcoming cohort. Uh, our, next co our next intake will be in January. Uh, so sign up now. Uh, there is a discount for those who sign up uh, within the course of this year. And uh, I look forward to working with you through the journey of uh, onboarding. And once you join the program, you will start at lead self because we believe that as leaders, you cannot lead others if you do not start by leading yourself. And once you do that, yeah. uh, the journey from there is going to be an interesting one. It wouldn't be easy because we try to also replicate <laughs> the reality of leadership where leadership is not for children as uh, our lead facilitator would say. It's hard, it's intense. Mm -hmm but it's very fulfilling. And if you stick with the process, you will undoubtedly grow and finally join a community of like-minded people. And once you get to that level, then you have also unlocked uh, your access to Africa experience. And once yeah. you join the tribe, uh, a group of community of alumni, you can always take part in all the Africa experiences that are organized after your admission into the uh, alumni community. So yes, uh, head out to our website, Lapid Leaders Africa, lapidleaders.africa, and learn more about us, apply. And if you need assistance, you can always just leave us your contact information and someone from our team will be there to assist with, with you uh, signing awesome. up. Awesome, awesome, awesome. There you have it, dear listeners, viewers, audience. These things are hard, you know? People who we are doing this together with. I said to Toite Hivo, there you have it. To be a part of our community, just as Dennis has said, head over to our website. And if you really, really get stuck, there are contacts. 
that you can easily reach out to us and we'll be in a position to guide you through the process of how you can become a member of our community. After all, we're doing a show on Ubuntu. What's better than inviting you to join our own community where we are building, doing things together? Uh, with that, that brings us to the end of our show today. Thank you so much, Mr. Dennis Karafa. Okay, just for the record, we call him Karafa in Lapi. So when you try to call him Dennis or anything else, it's, it's confusing. Who are you talking to? You know, like, am I lost? <laughs> yeah, but thank you I so agree. much, Karafa. It's been so amazing having you as a guest. It's been amazing also having this conversation with you. In case our audience, if you have any questions for Karafa or generally about the trip or how to join Lapid Leaders Africa, feel no worries. Just comment on the link that is going to upload this. I don't know. Any basically, if you go to LinkedIn, wherever we have posted about this particular episode, if you post your question on Instagram, on LinkedIn, or on Facebook, where we are going to promote it, we shall get back to you as soon as we can. But once again, we appreciate you so much. Thank you for joining us on our on this Jamuhuri Day. Thank you to everyone that's seeing this, whether in future or <laughs> in the present. We love you, we appreciate you, and we look forward to bringing more and more like minds, you know, challenging conversations that do not leave us the same way. Our guests, do you have any last words for our viewers on this beautiful Jamuhuri Day? Yes, I do. But I'd like to direct this to you uh, on the behalf. What is the first line of our national anthem in Swahili? Let's go for second stand. <laughs> so you want me to sing? Yeah. <laughs> or just give me the word? Yeah. Um, first line of the second stanza. First line of the second stanza. You know, I need to like... Uh, <laughs> Uh, can I do this? Can I do this in the comments? <laughs> the comments. Please do, please do. Um, because, but I also just wanted to emphasize on the fact that we have a language that we, uh, for sure, do not appreciate as much, you know, Swahili. Um, and that is something I learned in Rwanda, that English is not no, very common uh, within Africa and Swahili in the region is a language that's well known. You can see uh, how how yeah. defining it is to even recall the words. So for that, I'm going to do a little bit of Kenya, Sisi ni wazalendo, na tutoke pale, tujenge nchi yetu. Happy Jamuhuri Day. Tuonane singi. Okay, thank you. But, susa ta mi siyezi, siyezi ongea kwa luga nyingine ila kiswahili kwa sababu <laughs> challenge and level the pressure is getting worse <laughs> thank you so 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 much dear audience what is the first line of our of the second stanza of our national anthem in swahili not in english in swahili that's a challenge for all of us thank you so much karafa have a wonderful week and to our audience as well, have an amazing week. We shall see you in the next. Bye. Bye-bye.